I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video, I'm going to share with you what I know about caffeine, what it is, why we use it, and the science behind it. Now, this is an update to the video I did on caffeine several years ago. The latest research on caffeine shows it enhances alertness, stabilizes mood, boosts memory and cognition, and improves athletic performance. So stay tuned for more on caffeine. Caffeine is the most widely consumed stimulant and psychoactive drug on the planet. Caffeine is a methylated xanthine, which is a group of alkaloids commonly used as mild stimulants. Xanthine is a purine base naturally found in most of your body's tissues. Caffeine is chemically related to adenine and quanine, which are bases of DNA and RNA. The most common source of caffeine is the coffee bean from which coffee is extracted. Other natural sources include leaves of the tea plant, cocoa beans, cola nuts, holly leaves, yerba mate leaves, seeds from the guarana berries, and guayasa leaves. The earliest evidence of coffee as a beverage comes from the 15th century Sufi monasteries in Yemen. By the 16th century, coffee made its way north through the Middle East to Italy and the rest of Europe. Coffee plants were then exported with early explorers and settlers in the Americas. Chinese legend tells us tea as a source of caffeine was first used in about 3000 BC. The earliest evidence of caffeine use in the Americas comes from coffee bean residue found in a Mayan pot dating from 600 BC. Today, coffee and tea are drunk in most countries, but typically one predominates. For example, coffee is preferred, the preferred caffeine source in Europe and the Americas, while tea is preferred elsewhere. Now, despite the worldwide popularity of caffeine as a stimulant by everyone from students to the military to seniors, the only organization that currently bans the use of caffeine is the NCAA. Caffeine boosts brain health in several ways, but two in particular stand out. First, caffeine promotes alertness. Caffeine is an adenosine receptor antagonist, and adenosine functions as, as an inhibitory neurotransmitter in your brain. During the day, as adenosine levels rise, wakefulness decreases and eventually leads to sleep. As an adenosine antagonist, caffeine acts by blocking two of four adenosine receptor subtypes, A1 and A2A. Preventing adenosine from coupling with these two receptor subtypes increases alertness or wakefulness. A 13-night sleep study was conducted with 18 normal young adult males. Each participant received a cup of warm water, one, two, or four cups of regular coffee, a four-cup equivalent of decaffeinated coffee, or a four-cup equivalent of caffeine. Regular coffee produced dose-related changes in standard EEG sleep parameters, and four cups of coffee acted the same as the equivalent dose of caffeine. Caffeine caused REM sleep to shift to the early part of the night and stage three and four sleep to shift to the later in the night than in normal, compared to normal sleep cycles. The researchers concluded that coffee and caffeine may be used in normal people to induce symptoms of insomnia. And then second, caffeine improves physical endurance. Multiple studies show that trained athletes experience improved performance from low to moderate doses of caffeine. Some studies found improved trial performance and maximum cycling power, likely from a greater reliance on fat metabolism and decreased muscle fatigue. Caffeine helps athletes train longer and a great, at greater power output, and post-exercise recovery benefits from more glucose being taken up by cells and stored as glycogen. In fact, Caffeine can be so effective in sports, the World Anti-Doping Agency banned the use of caffeine in athletes from 1962 to 72 and again from 1984 to 2003. Caffeine was removed from the prohibited list of uh, drugs, but is still part of their monitoring program to monitor the possible misuse of it in sport. Caffeine is the most widely used psychoactive drug in the world boosting attention and normalizing mood and cognition. A study at John Hopkins University showed that caffeine enhances consolidation of long-term memory. This enhanced memory performance occurred 24 hours after caffeine consumption. 
This study is especially relevant if you're looking for nootropics for study because it means caffeine consumed after a study session helps consolidate memory of what you studied. Caffeine improves reaction time as well. It improves alertness and focus. Caffeine and coffee have been shown to repair DNA damage. Long-term caffeine use has been associated with a reduced risk of diabetes. And increased caffeine intake is associated with decreased risk of malignant melanoma. Increased caffeine consumption also protects against cataract blindness. How you feel on caffeine varies from person to person, but for most it depends on how much you consume. Caffeine acts as a central nervous st system stimulant. Once it crosses your blood-brain barrier, the most noticeable effect is alertness. Caffeine stimulates the release of dopamine which accounts for the pleasant feeling you associate with your first morning coffee. Most neurohackers find that consuming caffeine makes you more productive. You should find it easier to concentrate and get things done. Using a caffeinated beverage after a study session should help you recall what you studied more easily. But caffeine later in the afternoon or evening resets your internal body clock or your circadian rhythm and delays the natural rise of melatonin your brain's primary sleep hormone. So, consuming coffee, tea, or any energy drink too late in the day will likely leave you unable to sleep. And quitting caffeine abruptly can lead to some nasty withdrawal symptoms. I'll talk more about side effects later in this video. The first study I want to talk about, caffeine reduces the risk of suicide. Drinking several cups of coffee daily appears to reduce the risk of suicide by about 50% according to a study at the Harvard School of Public Health. Study authors reviewed data from three large studies and found that the risk of adult suicide who drank two to four cups of caffeinated coffee per day was about half compared to those who drank decaffeinated coffee or no coffee. Caffeine not only stimulates the central nervous system, but it also acts as a mild antidepressant by boosting production of serotonin, dopamine, and epinephrine. After analyzing all the data, researchers concluded, our results suggest an association between greater consumption of coffee and a lowered risk of suicide. The second one is uh, caffeine improves cognitive performance. 60 U 68 U.S. Navy SEAL trainees were randomly assigned to either 100, 200, or 300 milligrams of caffeine or a placebo in a capsule form after 72 hours of sleep deprivation and continuous exposure to other stressors. Cognitive tests included visual vigilance, reaction time, working memory, and mood. The chief researcher of the study, Harris Leiberman, reported, even in the most adverse circumstances, moderate doses of caffeine can improve cognitive function, including vigilance, learning and memory, and mood state. When cognitive performance is critical and must be maintained during exposure to severe stress, administration of caffeine may provide a significant advantage. A dose of 200 milligrams appears to be optimal under such conditions. And then we have studies for caffeine reduces depression. Recent clinical studies have shown that caffeine intake enhances the effect of antidepressants in rodents. To find out if it worked in humans, researchers in China recruited 95 male inpatients currently on antidepressant meds. Patients were given 60 or 100 milligrams of caffeine daily or a placebo daily for four weeks. The results showed low-dose caffeine improved cognitive performance in depressed patients. And the researchers concluded caffeine helps reverse the development of depression and enhances the outcome of antidepressant treatment in major depressive disorder. And then we have studies on how caffeine boosts memory. Sixty undergraduate students at the University of Arizona were given an 8-ounce cup of Starbucks Italian bold coffee with caffeine or decaffeinated as a placebo between 6 to 7 a.m. The participants were then instructed to read a book for 30 minutes. Students who drank the caffeinated coffee performed significantly better than placebo with 30% improvement in memory. The researchers performed the same test with 43 students between 2 and 4 in the afternoon. 
In contrast to the morning session, the students did not experience any memory benefit. The study authors concluded that caffeine has a specific benefit for memory during students' non-optimal time of day, early morning. These findings have real-world implications for students taking morning exams. And studies show that older adults also have better memory in the morning, but memory ability declines in the afternoon. In another study, adults over 65 who considered themselves morning types were tested twice over an interval of 5 to 11 days, once in the morning and once in the late afternoon. Adults who ingested decaffeinated coffee showed a significant decline in memory performance from morning to afternoon. In contrast, those who ingested caffeine showed no decline in performance from morning to afternoon. So the conclusion is obvious. Older adults perform better in the afternoon when it comes to memory by consuming a caffeinated beverage. According to the Mayo Clinic, 400 milligrams of caffeine per day appears to be safe for most healthy adults. About the amount of caffeine in four cups of regular brewed coffee, or one and a half Starbucks tall coffees. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommend ages 12 to 18 limit caffeine intake to more than 100 milligrams per day. And the half-life of caffeine is four to six hours, and you experience the effects of caffeine for at least four hours. Now be aware that sources of caffeine include coffee, tea, Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew, five-hour energy shots, monster energy drinks, and one Starbucks tall coffee can contain 235 milligrams of caffeine. So it's surprisingly easy to quickly exceed your personal caffeine limit before you begin to experience caffeine toxicity. Everyone has a different tolerance level before experiencing the symptoms of caffeine overdose. Listen to your body to know when your personal limit is. One of the most popular and simple nootropic stacks is caffeine stacked with L-theanine. A study with 49 people was conducted at a university in the Netherlands to assess the effects of caffeine, L-theanine, and EGCG, which is found in green tea, on mood and cognitive performance. Study authors noted as little as 40 milligrams of caffeine has been shown to improve performance on long-duration cognitive tests, alertness, arousal, and vigor. The team also noted just 200 milligrams of L-theanine improve feelings of calmness, relaxation, and less tension. And when L-theanine and caffeine were combined, there was a significant improvement in alertness and attention switching task performance, more so than with caffeine alone. The researchers concluded, these studies provide reliable evidence showing that L-theanine and caffeine have clear beneficial effects on sustained attention, memory, and suppression of distraction. Moreover, L-theanine was found to lead to relaxation by reducing caffeine-induced arousal. Now, the best pre-formulated caffeine and L-theanine stack that I've tried and use regularly is the Performance Lab Caffeine Plus. This supplement contains natural caffeine from coffee robusta seeds, L-theanine as sun-theanine, azure L-tyrosine, and is balanced with the Neutrogenesis B complex for alert, clean energy without the jitters. You'll find a link to this supplement down in the notes section of this video if you want to try it. I tried some just before I made this video. Caffeine is a xanthine alkaloid that can be profoundly toxic and deadly, but reports of caffeine overdoses resulted in, resulting in death are relatively rare. However, it's surprisingly easy to go into caffeine toxicity territory, so please, always check the labels on caffeinated beverages and energy drinks. Doses as little as 200 milligrams can be toxic to sensitive people. Symptoms of caffeine toxicity include feeling wired, breathing trouble, confusion, diarrhea, fainting, fever, hallucination, increased thirst and or urination, heart palpitations, restlessness, sweating, muscle tremors, and rapid heartbeat. Caffeine is addictive and you can quickly build up a tolerance to its energizing effects. 
Caffeine withdrawal is serious and can include anxiety, fatigue, headaches, irritability, digestive problems, and trouble concentrating. And do not combine any source of caffeine with ephedrine, quinolone antibiotics, propanolol, theophylline, certain birth control pills, and echinacea. Check with your doctor or pharmacist if you're using any other medications that may be affected by caffeine. Doses of 10 grams of caffeine can be deadly, although this varies from person to person. In one case, a person died from only 240 milligrams of caffeine. A teaspoon of caffeine powder has 3,200 milligrams of caffeine. That's one teaspoon. You get caffeine from a variety of sources, including coffee, green or black tea, energy shot, drinks or shots, caffeinated beverages like cola, Yerba Mate, chocolate, over-the-counter stimulant supplements, some weight loss drugs, and a few pre-formulated nootropic stacks. Caffeine is a natural alkaloid found in the seeds and leaves of certain plants. Caffeine in coffee originates primarily from the bean of the coffee, coffee arabica which is a shrub or small tree that grows in high-altitude subtropical regions of the world. Caffeine anhydrous is manufactured from the beans of coffee plants. Anhydrous means without water. Caffeine is extracted from the bean and dehydrated, which produces a highly concentrated caffeine powder. Now, I highly recommend trying the new Performance Lab Caffeine Plus supplement. This supplement contains natural caffeine from coffee robusta seeds, 50 milligrams, L-theanine as sun-theanine, 100 milligrams, azupure L-tyrosine, 250 milligrams, and is balanced with the Nutrigenesis B vitamins. Now, you'll find a link to it down below in the notes section below this video. And so that's my report on caffeine. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for caffeine, or click on the link below this video. Over on my website, you'll find a full transcript of this video. And you'll also find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics over on nootropicsexpert.com. Now, if you have any questions or you want to share your experience using caffeine, please use the comment section below this video or at the bottom of my caffeine review over on Nootropics Expert. I try my best to respond to comments and questions as quickly as I can. And if you haven't already, download your free copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. It's nearly 100 pages and contains details on 92 of the most popular nootropics used today. There's a link to that download below this video in the notes section. And it's finally available, the second edition of my book, Head First, The Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain with Nootropic Supplements. Head First, the second edition, is 962 pages and is available in hardcover, paperback, or for iPad or Kindle. You can get your copy at any major bookseller, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Belboa Press, Apple Books, Walmart, and other places. You will find a link to these stores down below in the notes section of this video. Get your copy today. And if you could use some personal help with choosing the right nootropics or figuring out how to deal with your own brain health issues, consider booking a personal consultation with me. You'll find a link to my calendar down below this video in the notes section. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.